Hi, I'm Elite Series Pro Dave Lafibra. And one of the good things about Wired to Fish is they dig really deep to try to get you the best information. One of the bad things about Wired to Fish is they dig really deep to get you the best information. Um, I've got a little trick that I do that I don't really talk about a whole lot. Actually, I think I'm changing my mind right now. The bait's in my hand. This is a, uh, this is a, a Yamamoto grub. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about some of the things that I do to, to get an extra bite in a big tournament or a high pressure situation or to catch fish that are on real pressured lakes, you know, like a lot of boat traffic or super clear water or any of those times when you're, you know, you're just fishing and you see fish following. You know, I get that question a lot actually, you know, how do you get those fish that are following to bite? Whether it's smallmouth, spotted bass, largemouth, you know, schoolers. And uh, this is something that I do that's, that's won me a lot of money. Um, I, I actually, last year in a Bass Open, um, I finished in the top five and, and had a shot at winning the tournament. But um, I'll talk about my setup in a minute. But this is real simple. This is a drop shot hook that we use. Um, it's common for fishing in deep brush piles and thing. It's a rebarb hook. And uh, it's made by Gamagatsu, made for Robo Worm. And it's got this little keeper on here, similar to you know the hooks that we flip with. And that's just to hold your plastic up. It's made for Texas rigging, but I take this four inch grub. You can also do this with a three inch grub and a smaller hook. And I just thread it on there and just pretend like this hook is a jig head. And I'll just run it up there. It's real important that you, that you rig this straight. And I'll rig it up on the jig head, or it's actually a hook. Just rig it up there on the hook like that. Get it, pull it right up over the knot, over that keeper, and just pinch it real good on there and it stays up really good. And uh, this right here is a killer bait. And I'm gonna show you how I work it. This is a technique that I used, you know, in, in pressured water. You know, we got boats everywhere, crystal clear water. I can see the bottom in 15 feet. One of the keys to this is braided line. You know, I'm using Suffix Nano Braid. For this technique though, I'm using a six pound, which is lighter than what I normally use. I normally use eight. So I need to throw that thing really far. A good quality spinning reel. You know, this is a brand new one from 13. It's called a Creed GT. It's got a little bit bigger spool. That helps in getting you that casting distance. And the light rod. I mean, this is a medium light rod. This is the only technique that I use with this rod. 7.6. You know, you want to get that long rod wimpy thing so you can really get the distance on the cast. And all I'm doing is loading that rod. You know, you want to use the you know, you, this is one of those techniques where, you know, you're not skipping and throwing it like, like a pro normally does. You want to get it way up in the air and get as much distance as you can. And then I'm just reeling it real slow like that. Another really tough condition is, is super calm, clear water. And that's one of the times when I pull this rod out and make sure I give it a try. Um, when it's real calm, you can throw it way out there and, and, and you can see it waking from way out there and you see the, you know, sometimes you actually see the fish, you know, like a dark shadow get behind it. And I just, you know, I can't say it enough, you know, you just want to treat it like a, like a typical wake bait. One gets behind it, don't speed it up, don't drop it, don't slow it down. Just keep it real steady and uh, usually they, they come right up behind it, track it for a little while and <laughs> just decide to bite it. I mean, that's how real it looks in the water.